Hello and welcome. I'm going to show you a very easy and quick way you can add mobile buttons and stick controls to your game using Unity's new input system. First, let's install the input system package. Go into Window and open the Packet Manager. Make sure you have Unity Registry selected to show off packages and search for input over here. Now, select the input system packages and click Install. Please also make sure you're installing at least version 1.5.0. After the installation is complete, you'll get a warning message asking for you to activate the new input system. For now, let's just select No. Now close the window and let's go to Edit Project Settings. And under Player, we are going to search for Input Handling. And select Both. That way, we can use both the new and old input systems. Now hit apply and wait for the Unity engine to restart. Now let's close the window and make sure our scene is open. The first thing we need to do is to add some player actions for we to use. Let's go into create input actions and create an action named player input actions. Double click to open the actions. And over here on action map, let's right click and create a new action map. And let's name it player. Now, let's double click here in Actions to rename it and create our Move action. Let's set the action type to a value. And in Control type, let's set it to Any. Now, expand the move and on Binding, let's use the gamepad left stick for our movement action and create a new action named Attack. And under Path, let's select the South button of the gamepad. Now, make sure your action is set to value. Let's make sure to save the asset and close this window. Now, let's create an object for we to see the effects of our actions. Let's create a simple 3D cube. And also remember to reset the transform. You can press the F button to, to focus the selected object. Now, let's select our cube and add a new component under input and player input. Let's select our input action we just created. And in behavior, make sure to set it to send messages just for simplicity's sake. This behavior will try to automatically call methods for our input callback inside our scripts based on the action names we just created. You can see the list of all the methods down here. Now let's create a very simple cube controller. Right click, create a new C sharp script and name it cube controller. Double click to open it. And let's delete the start method as we won't need it. Uh, we will need a serialize private vector2 named speed. And here in update let's do a transform.translate and translate the position by the speed times time dot delta time. Now, for we to use the callback function of the player input, we will need to use unity engine dot input systems. And now we declare the callback method. Let's make a public void on move and we will receive an input value. Name it input value and inside here we will just set the speed to be equals of input value dot get and we want a vector to type value which will be our sticks position which is a normalized value of 0 to 1. Now let's add our on attack callback method and here let's just do a debug.log to see if it's working. Let's do an input value dot is pressed. Let's save the file and go back into Unity. Now select the cube and add the cube controller to it. Now let's finally start adding our mobile buttons. Let's add a new UI canvas. Unity will automatically add an event system. Now, you'll get this warning saying that you are using the old input system. To fix this, just simply click the button and Unity will automatically correct it for you. 
Now let's go back to our canvas, hit the 2D and press F to focus on the canvas. Right click to add a new image. Let's add a new component. Here on input, let's add an unstick button, which is a new input system component that will relay our button to our input actions. Here let's select the button south of the gamepad we selected for the attack. Now, if you play the game, you can already see this working. Now, if you press the button, you will see that our attack callback function is already being called. Now, let's go back and just choose a better image for our button. Let's select the knob. And let's also drag it to the down right. Now, let's also rename this to be attack button. Now let's go back to the canvas. Right click it on UI and let's create a new image for our second button. And let's name it movement stick button. Now over here let's add another component, but this time let's choose the on screen stick. Let's select our gamepad and now let's choose our left stick for our command path. Let's position our stick down left here and let's also add a nice UI graphics. Now if you hit play you can already see it works. You can drag the stick and it will move the cube. You can change the movement range to tell how far away you can drag the stick. Now if you want to start to move the stick anywhere on the screen the input system component already has a feature for that. On behavior, you just need to select exact position with dynamic origin, and you'll get this circular area where you can start the drag. You can change the side by, by changing the dynamic origin range variable. If you want to have a twin stick setup though, this comes with a few problems. Let's duplicate our stick and move it to the other side of the screen. Select both of them so we can see both areas at the same time. Now here you can see the areas are intersecting and there is even a little area up that are not being covered. That is not ideal and it can cause problems. So I will be showing you a trick you can use to overcome this problem and set up a proper area where your sticks will be able to move. Let me quickly undo the changes and go back to the way it were previously. Now right click the canvas and let's create a new UI image. And let's name it stick input area. Now let's make sure the image is filling the whole window. Click over here, hold out and click on the bottom right corner so the image will fill the screen. Now this is important, we want our stick input area to be above the our movement stick button, but below the attack button. So let's put it there. And also let's make it transparent as we don't need to see it. The way that this trick will work is that we will have this hidden image receive our touch and click inputs and relay them to the on screen stick button component. So it will only work when you click on the area that this image is. Now let's create a new C-sharp script and name it mobile input stick. First we want to import unity engine dot event systems. As we will be inheriting from a few interfaces, we will be inheriting from iPointer down handler, iPointer up handler, and finally iDrag handler. Now, let's create a new hack transform and name this canvas hack transform. Let's also add a serialized field hack transform for our stick button transform. We will also be needing a vector tool name this start position 
to store our start position for our joystick controller so we can know where to come back to and also we will store a on-stick on-screen stick named stick script and let's also make sure to import this using unity engine dot input system dot on screen let's also add a variable to store our image name it image so we can show and hide our image when we want and make sure to import unity engine dot ui now let's get our image equals get component of type image let's get our canvas rec transform by getting component in parent and get the component of type rec transform now let's set up our stick script by getting the component from our stick transform dot get component of type on screen stick and finally let's set our start position for the starting position of this stick script and as this is a rec transform let's save the anchored position which is the position on the rec transform Now we won't be needing to update, so let's delete it. And finally, let's implement these interfaces. You can click on this light bulb on the visual code to automatically implement the interfaces. So let's implement all, all three interfaces. Now let's start. The on direct function is called when you are holding the object. And for this, we don't do anything special. We just call our stick script and call the on drag method passing the event data arguments. The on pointer down function is called when it is first clicked. And for this, we need a few things. In here, we want to convert the event that position of the click and convert it to the rec transform position on the canvas. So first, let's create a, a, let's create a vector to local point to store our position conversion. We can use the rec transform utility dot screen point to local point in rectangle and pass our canvas rec transform, the position of our canvas, the input dot mouse position, which is the position of the click, and event data dot press camera, press event camera to calculate the position. And finally, our local point vector 2, which will be the position inside the rec transform of the canvas. The out keyword means it the functions will set the value of this variable. Let's do a stick transform dot anchored position equals local point to set the position of our stick button to be below the click. Now let's do an image dot enable equals false to disable the image and prevent further clicks on this input area. And finally, let's do a stick script dot on pointer down and pass an event data to relay the on pointer down event the on pointer up method is called when we release the button and here first we just relay the message on stick script dot on pointer up and pass an event data then we re-enable the image using image dot enable equals true and finally we set up we set the stick transform dot anchor position to be equals the start position to go back to the original position let's save it select our stick input area and drag in the component now let's take the movement stick button and put it put the reference in the stick transform finally let's just fix up a few things let's increase the button size put it down here Going to the main camera on environment let's put a solid color and let's create a very simple material name it red and put it in the color red and then drag it for our cube just so we can see it better 
Now let's hit play and test it. If you are having this problem where the stick is going back to the default position, it's because we need to set up the behavior to be exact position with dynamic origin, even though we won't be using exactly the behavior of this component. Now, as you can see, everything is working, even in distant areas where the dynamic origin range should not be able to be functioning. And as our attack button is above the image, it is still working. Now let's make a twin stick button setup. First, let's click on our stick input area. Let's click on color and put the alpha a bit more just so we can see the area we are working with. Put the area of the stick input area to be about half of the screen. Let's also set the dynamic origin range to be very small so there's no chance the component will be interfering with us. As you can already notice, with this method, you can use a, a square area, so the stick will only move when you click on, on that area of the screen. Now let's duplicate our stick button and put it on the, on the other side of the screen. Let's duplicate the stick input area and name it right stick input area and this one left stick input area just so we have no confusion let's set the area to be the other side of the screen and also make sure to drag the other stick button to the mobile input stick component that we cre created now let's hit play and test it out as you can see, it's already working. The left side and the right side don't interfere with each other, and we can have a square area. And that's it. A very simple way you can add a twin stick setup to your games. I hope this was helpful, and until next time.